this is great, right? We have a lot Absolutely. to discuss now, and we've only gone through two of the approvals mm. this year. We got to get to the third one. This is enacitinib. Why don't you tell us, uh, Sasha, about the role of IDH1 and 2 mutations and the data supporting enacitinib? Okay. IDH mutations are not AML defining, so it's not like a core binding factor fusion or a nucleophosphate mutation. We see them in MDS, we see them in MPNs, and we see them in AML. Uh, we see them even as a chip mutation in patients just walking down the street with normal blood counts. That being said, uh, there's a significant fraction of patients with AML who have these mutations. There are two types, they occur in two different enzymes, but enzymes that achieve the same thing. Um, they're members of the Krebs cycle, in normal health when they're wild type. But when they're mutated, they have a different function. And instead of the forward reaction that converts is uh, isocitrate to uh, succinate, um, they run a reverse act, uh, reaction, uh, sorry, to alpha ketoglutarate. Uh, they run a reverse act, uh, reaction that converts alpha ketoglutarate to a metabolite called 2 hydroxyglutarate or 2-HG. And 2-HG basically creates all of the phenomena that we know uh, phenomena that we know of that are associated with IDH mutations, which is it, it disrupts a number of enzymes that require alpha ketoglutarate as a cofactor. And so that includes the TET2 uh, cytosine dioxygenases. It includes uh, uh, Jumanji C histone demethylases that lead to an epigenetic change in the cell that disrupts differentiation programming. And so that's why we think that this contributes to leukemogenesis because it has this abnormal hematopoietic uh, uh, differentiation program that's caused by 2-HG. What these drugs do is they affect the mutant cells but really don't have much effect on the wild type IDH. And they inhibit the enzyme when it's running that abnormal reaction that generates 2-HG. And the functional effects is the 2-HG goes away and the effects of the 2-HG therefore go away. And that's why we see these patients respond with differentiation to these agents. And that's what's been seen in, in both in vitro studies prior to the, stu the clinical trials and then in clinical studies of the patients. We saw similar effects taking from the leukemic blast and then watching those cells differentiate into neutrophils, yet maintaining the IDH mutations in the neutrophils that were generated. So what happens in the clinic? Um, that's what it looks like. The drug has relatively few treatment-associated uh, side effects in phase one, two testing. It was remarkably well-tolerated. There was some GI disturbances that were reported, some taste disturbances, um, some uh, change in appetite. Uh, there were uh, bumps in indirect bilirubin, but really not major side effects that you'd worry about your patient feeling sick, sick that would limit your ability to give the drug. And actually, if you look at the dose of the drug that it inhibits the enzyme and drops the 2-HG levels, you don't need very much of it. So even though they did a phase one dose escalation to really high doses, the phase two dose that was established was quite low. It just picked a, a number in terms of a dose that would turn off 2-HG. And by doing that, they found a tolerable dose that inhibited the target, got the biologic effects, and patients could take. And it's been both well-tolerated and quite effective. The clinical effects include improvements in cytopenias. Many of the patients have reduction in bone marrow blasts, and CRs were seen in about 25% of patients. But um, not 100% of patients. But not 100%. And not everybody responded. And I think that's important because you would figure if everybody has the mutation. It's a targeted agent, right? It's a targeted agent, and everybody had to have the mutation to go on the study. Wouldn't you expect to see that? And it gets back to the original point. Each leukemia comes from multiple mutations. So what IDH is doing to hold up that stool, if it's a four-legged stool from four mutations, you cut out one of those legs, it might hold up. But some leukemias might be a three-legged stool and you get rid of the IDH mutation and it really falls over. It's much more sensitive. And, and so from patient to patient, there was variable responses. But it was well tolerated across the board. It led to transfusion independence and improved quality of life on the study. Um, and a decent number of patients had uh, CRs that were durable. Um, so clinical benefit was easy to see.